Hey everyone, this is Lorna from Neurology Solutions. I'm the physical therapy assistant here. Um, we're just going to go through an easy quadruped series that you can follow along here at home. Uh, Eric, our PT here, will be narrating, um, so just follow along the best you can. All right, so here we go. So Lorna is going to go into a quadruped position, basically hands and knees, and you want to make sure you're relatively level starting in a neutral spine. So what that means is basically you don't have too much arch, but you're also not rounded. And you want to make sure that you're getting that 90 degree angle from the trunk to the arm and the trunk to your legs. So she's going to start out with a basically cat camel or cat cow, depending on who you do talk to. And this is going to be working on spinal mobility. So as she goes into the flexed position where she ran, there you go, she's going to extend up, head and chest are coming, she's dropping from the belly button down and rotating that pelvis and then she's going to round out, tucking the chin, trying to basically bring her chest and her pelvis together. So she's tucking her butt underneath and she's going to reverse this. So she's going at a nice slow pace. Again, depending on your tolerance, you may go a little faster, a little slower. She has good flexibility, so most people are not going to look quite like this. You're not going to round out quite that much. That is okay just do your best. She's also, when she's going into this arch position, she's not leading with her head. If you notice, her head is the ending position. It's her chest that promotes the movement. So you want to think about moving through your chest cavity, not leading from your head. Also, another important component is the breathing aspect. So when she's breathing in and out, and she takes that nice inhale, her belly expands and that actually creates a relatively extended position. That's when she's arching her low back. And then when she breathes out is when she's, so right now she's actually breathing in. And then as she rounds her body, she's going to breathe out, pushing all that air out. That diaphragm shrinks down, the belly button goes towards the spine. All right, so that's about five there. So we're gonna move on to now, we call it kind of the drunk cat. <laughs> so she'll, you'll understand when she starts going into it. So this is gonna be a bit more complex. So she's gonna be going into kind of this rotational movement that gets a bit more pelvic uh, mobility compared to the last one. So as you can see, she's making kind of a side arch as she comes to the forward again, and she's gonna get into that angry cat position and then rotate towards us tucking her butt, bringing back her chest. So basically you're adding a side-to-side -side component to that original. So this is a little bit more complex, takes a little bit more coordination, but very, very beneficial. You think about bed mobility, just reaching. These are common things that uh, start getting limited because of rigidity. So really nice to be able to uh, do this on a routine basis, limber up, so maybe that bed mobility is not so difficult, reaching under that couch if you drop something won't be so limiting. She's going to keep going again focusing on her breath trying to utilize her diaphragm for the proper breathing instead of up into the chest and those accessory muscles in the neck because that's going to cause tension. Good and she might go the other way as well. Let's go to the other way. So even though it's technically the same circle, that initiation from one way to the other, it's always good to do. So just like we did the head circles on one of the other videos, if you've watched one of those, it's always good to go both directions. All right, so we're gonna move on to now more of a true rotational. Um, we kinda, it's a thread the needle and reach. Um, if you're familiar with the power moves, it's the quadruped uh, basically twist, the power twist. So Lorna is going to reach underneath her body, trying to bring that shoulder and even head to the floor if possible. Again, she's pretty flexible. Some of you may not be able to do that. That left elbow bends, and then she's going to come back up. She's going to reach as tall as she can, opening that chest, reaching up, looking up with the head as well. If that causes dizziness, you can keep your head in a more neutral position. And she's reaching as far as she can each time, really working on that rotation through the thoracic cavity. And if you notice, she's a bit more back into her uh, heels with her butt, and that actually locks down that lumbar spine. And so you isolate a little bit more of the thoracic cavity when you do that, versus if you're uh, tilted a little more forward. So she's gonna do five on that side, and then we're gonna switch sides again Make sure you are not holding your breath during this sequence. 
is critical. Your body will actually fight back against these movements if you're holding your breath. This is a flexibility routine. This is not a strength routine. One more. Excellent. Okay, she's going to move on to the other side. So if you're following along, switch. If you want it with the left arm, with the right, doesn't matter. Just move on to the next. Reach in nice and tall. And you can see that thoracic cavity really rotates again. Within the movement disorder world, the rigidity is going to want to be uh, fighting back against you. You may not be able to get that much rotation. That is okay. If you consistently practice this, you will improve. Now you're going to look quite like Lorna, no, but she's pretty hypermobile. She's got that dancer background, so that definitely helps. And again, I'm going to say it more and more and more. Make sure you are breathing through these movements. Last one. Excellent. So that is a quick quadruped series just to get that spine moving. I want to thank Lorna for demonstrating this, and we will uh, see you next time.